So it worked. I mean, it absolutely worked. You guys are always asking me, can I take a cutting, put it in a cup, put it in my windowsill, and just let it do its thing? Absolutely. So today we're going to start a little experiment with hydrangea propagation. We're going to head out and we're going to get some cuttings of that lace cap hydrangea that I planted that originally came from Hug Point, Oregon. I've got those cuttings right here now. We're going to whittle these down, get them in two different cups, Dixie cups, and we're going to try and root them indoors inside the house. It's later in the summer, so we're at August 22nd today. And a lot of people ask, can I take cuttings of hydrangea this time of year and bring them inside my house and get them to root? Yes, you can do it. We're gonna do a little experiment right now with it. I'm gonna put one cup in my windowsill because I get questions about that a lot. And I'm gonna put another one inside a little grow tent with a little grow light that will shine on this at the same intensity all the way through. So we're going to find out which method or which form of lighting inside the house is going to work out better. And I'll talk about other aspects of this as we go. But before we get started, please hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along and see how this all turns out. And go check out the website down below if you want to see the most fantastic plant propagation frame you've ever seen in your life. All right, let's go. All right, so I've got two Dixie cups here filled with my finely ground fir bark. You can use any medium as long as it meets the requirements for a good plant propagation medium. And I've got a video, I'll put a link down to that uh, below in the description. And then I've got our two cuttings here. You can see it's a hot day. They're already starting to wilt a little bit. So we're gonna get these taken care of quickly and get them put in these little cups. Now, because the tops here, are so soft and supple. I don't want to really use that part for a cutting. So what I'm going to do is cut down a little further on the branch. We're going to snip that top part off and then we're going to come down and let's see here. I think what we're going to do is snip it about right here, peel a couple leaves off, and then we're going to whittle these leaves down here so that they fit in the cup. And that's going to be our cutting. Now, typically, I will cut just below a leaf node. I'm gonna leave a little bit more this time. In, in fact, we'll go at an angle to give it more room to root along that cambium. And that'll make a nice little cutting right there. So the first thing we wanna do is dip this into some rooting hormone. I finally got a new tub of, actually it's a new old tub of rooting hormone because that last one was just about done. We're just gonna dip it in here real quick, shake off the excess. Doesn't matter what rooting hormone you use. I like powdered rooting hormones for this. And yes, I know a lot of people are going to say you don't want to dip that into the tub. I've been doing it for years. It's never caused a problem. The last thing we'll do is dibble the center here because the dibbler police are out once again. And I better do things right for you. So we're going to put a little hole down here in the center just so that we don't rub off the rooting hormone as we're sticking this cutting. And then we'll stick it right down in our medium here. The last thing I want to do, because we're going to make this a nice sealed uh, system that we don't have to think about, is we're going to put a Dixie cup over this, and I've got plenty of height there, so we're good to go. So we're going to tamp this down. They're a little cutting all firm down in there. Now, this is a really coarse material. It's fine fur bark, but it's a coarse material. So I want to pack it down a little bit. If you have a finer material, you may not want to pack it down too much. You want to make sure it drains well. We'll get our other cutting going here. And I'm just going to snip the very tip off of that guy. We'll strip down some leaves down here. I think I will keep the top part, even though that's pretty soft. Cut a big portion of the leaf off. And right below the node at a 45. We'll dip it in some rooting hormone. And there you have it. All right. Let's dibble the top here. Sometimes I like to do this too. I'll just kind of measure it where the cup is, make sure, see how far down I want to put it. And that's going to work out perfect. Make sure we're going to clear. Yep, 
we're good to go there. We'll tamp this down. And that's basically it for sticking our cuttings. Now this is nothing you have to worry about too much, but I am working fairly quickly here because I don't want too much moisture to be lost from these cuttings. Um, they're doing okay. They're fine how they are right now. If you are worried about it or in a really hot climate, you could miss the tops of these as you go. But I've done all this over probably a couple minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and water these in really well. You could do this over a kitchen sink or whatever you have. I'm just making sure that everything's fully moistened in there. I'm sure I'm gonna catch a bunch of grief about how much water I'm using. We're on our own well here, and in the grand scheme of things, in Washington State, this is pretty normal. <laughs> all right, so we've got water just saturating down in there all the way through the medium, and that's what we want. We want plenty of moisture, because what we're gonna do now is put those lids on, and we're gonna seal all this in. All right, so the first thing I wanna do here is just kinda take a paper towel and get any excess water off around the edge. And you'll see why I'm doing that in just a minute here. And then the other thing, I, I know a lot of people are probably gonna say, once you water these things, you just rinsed all the rooting hormone off. And I get that a lot, but it's just fine. I, like I said, I've been doing this for years. It might rinse a little bit off around the outside edge, but the hormone sits on the bottom side of that cutting and it the water doesn't rinse it all off. It stays on there a little and they sat for a couple minutes with the hormone absorbing it. It's gonna be just fine. They don't need a lot of hormone. The most important thing about cuttings is getting the cuttings right, taking them at the right time, in the right condition, and putting them in the right environment with the right medium, keeping the humidity up for these softwood cuttings. And, you know, the hormone is inconsequential. It just gives it a little bit of a boost from that point on. So now we're gonna take our little Dixie cups here and just put them right over the top. Now, just so you guys see this, I've got holes in the bottom of these cups here. And let's see if I can show you one. There's a hole right there on that side and I just take scissors and I cut holes in them. It's really a pretty simple process. I don't do anything fancy and I've got a hole on that side. So I do two sides, cut a little hole. I just grab it, the corner of that with scissors and snip it off. And then the tops, I do not have any holes in. I have done cuttings like this with holes in the top, just when I know they were a little bit more hardened off, the, the wood, and they didn't need so much humidity. But in this case, we're gonna try and keep these sealed up and not even deal with them, not water them or anything for the entire period of time. So I wanna seal that off so that it's just recirculating the humidity in there. So we'll get our other cup here. And we're gonna put this one over the top. And it's just gonna barely make it. There we go, get it so it's nice in there. Okay, so we've got our two cups on. Now here's why we dried the cup. I'm gonna take some tape here, and this is just painter's tape. That's a really good one to use if you wanna be able to take the tape off really quickly, Mark. <laughs> I always ship his plants with that packing tape and that stuff's impossible to get off, but it's almost just as fun to watch him open his packages and we're always going back and forth on what we're going to use next to uh, drive each other crazy with packaging material, but <laughs> it's all part of the fun. All right, so painter's tape is nice because it comes off really easy. It doesn't leave a residue. It just It's just really easy to take apart. So it's not a problem at all when it comes time to take this cup off and get that uh, cutting acclimated to less humidity. And there it is, there's our whole setup. Now the last thing you can do is take another cup that doesn't have holes in the bottom and just slide it in there. So you can put it on a windowsill or anything that you want and you're not gonna worry about water dripping out on your windowsill or you know your counter or anything like that. It's just a completely sealed system other than a couple holes in the bottom of this cup but with this cup slid on, it's fairly sealed up. It's just gonna circulate moisture in there. That little cutting set, it's got everything it needs. You don't have to mess with it. And we'll just put it where it needs to be in the proper lighting. It should be good to go. 
This is one inch painter's tape for any of you guys asking. I was actually looking for my half inch roll, but didn't, I think I actually, <laughs> there it is right in front of my face, Lord almighty. That actually might be three quarters of an inch. But this stuff is gonna work out really well, actually better. I've always used that shorter roll, but uh, this is actually covering a little better on both, both cups, both sides, top and bottom, and I'm able to seal it down. So I might just start buying this one inch stuff from here on. I really like it. And yes, Scott, I still am drinking Folgers. I've got issues, man. All right, we've got our second little cup here. Slide that down in there, and we're ready to rock and roll. So there you have it, two beautiful little cuttings in their sealed little systems, and these things are gonna do well. I really believe we're gonna get good roots out of these guys. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, like I said, take one of these. People ask me all the time, can I put this in a windowsill with sun coming through that windowsill and just have it in the light of the window? So we're gonna try that. However, I do wanna kind of make note of something that's really important about that. This one's gonna go under an LED light that is 5,500 Kelvin for the temperature, which is a great light uh, temperature for uh, vegetative growth, For not for flowering. Flowering would be like red or light, somewhere down in the uh, 25 or 3,000 Kelvin range. This, we want something that's gonna work good for vegetative growth. So we're gonna put that under that light. There's a couple considerations. One, I would not recommend putting something like this. You could do it with a hardwood cutting that's not covered, but I wouldn't recommend putting something like this in a windowsill where direct sun is coming through. Because even though it's in your house and it feels protected in your house, it's still got direct sun blasting through your main window and then blasting through this window, which will cook this cutting. Do this in a window that does not have sun coming through it. Plenty of skylight, but no direct sun, or you'll cook your cutting. You'll cause a lot of heat buildup in there, and even if it doesn't cook the cutting, it'll just create an environment that contributes to more rot. So heat and too much moisture are really the things in combination that contribute to a lot of this bacterial or fungi growth and you know all the rot that you guys are finding. So make sure that it's in a window that does not have direct sun. The other consideration is this. A lot of people ask, and this is important, so hopefully you're watching this whole thing. A lot of people ask, can I just bring it and put it into my windowsill? Well, yeah, you can, but there's a consideration here. We're getting towards the end of summer. In your windowsill, you are dealing with the light from the outdoors, which is getting less and less every day because we're heading into fall and then winter especially in the northern states or northern parts of the world where you know even like especially alaska where they get no sun for a few days out of the winter uh in my state of washington in the winter time the sun is down at like 3 30 in the afternoon that's like we're headed into evening now and so you're you're gonna the the amount of light these things get is gonna trigger these plants to want to start going dormant, which is what you don't want. We're trying to root a plant and make it feel like it's got plenty of light and summer and energy to just grow lots of roots and then start putting on new growth. So a consideration you're gonna wanna do, you could put this in a windowsill right now, but eventually you're gonna need to move it to something that's got a longer period of light, which is gonna mean you're gonna need some you know, some uh, LED or fluorescent lights or something like that on a timer that keeps the light on for 16, 18 hours a day. Now in my area, in the brightest part of summer, um, the, the amount of light that we get is 14 and a half hours a day at the longest period, you know, day period. And, but what I find indoors when I'm doing these rooted cuttings or house plants is 16 hours actually helps out even more. And sometimes I'll go up to 18 hours. 16 hours is a pretty good job though. All right, so here we are. We've got our cuttings. Let's get them inside and watch what happens. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I've got this down in a windowsill that is, 
out of direct sunlight, but there might be a little bit of the day in the late evening when the sun hits this. I'll keep an eye on it. If it does, I'll have to move it somewhere else, but this is about the best lighting in a windowsill in my house. The other one's going in this grow tent that I've used for house plants and hydrangeas in the past. I'm gonna have this set up on this little tote here to get it closer to the light. I could lower the light down as well, but it's blanketing this whole tent so that I've got uh, room for other plants around here. But this light right here, I'm not telling you to go buy this. I don't have any affiliation with this, but in case you're interested, it's there's the model and all that good information. It's only 54 watts. It's a 5,500 Kelvin uh, LED cob. And what it does is shine the light down with this lens reflector. It just shines it down in a nice pattern that hits the whole bottom of this tent. And this 54 watts is enough to grow a lot of plants down in there. But they are kind of spendy. I think that goes for like 120, 130 bucks just for that one light. But it should be good for this hydrangea here. I've got it probably two and a half foot below the light. We've got that guy sitting down in there nice and tight. Let's give it a little bit of time and we'll come back when something happens. Today is August 22nd. See you guys then. So here we are, hydrangea number one. And there's number two, tucked back in the window. Let's go talk about these. So here are our little hydrangea cuttings and it's been almost two months. That was August 22nd, I think. Today is October 19th, so just a few days away. And they've had absolutely 100% no intervention from me. I have not taken these out of the cups. I have not taken anything apart here. The water has just been circulating in these cups all this time. Let's take a look at these. So first of all, you'll see that this one right here was the cutting that was inside of the grow tent. And it's got something to do with the light because this happened with the little reaper cuttings or the little reaper seedlings that we grew last winter or the winter before. But uh, you can see that purple color. It's all about that LED lighting. And I seem to get that on a lot of plants that I grow under that lighting. So kind of bizarre, kind of different. It's not dying back at all. It's just the color that it's turning. It's almost like fall colors in there. I'm not sure why it's doing that because it's under a vegetative bulb. But you can see, in fact, let's just peel this off. Now that we've got this, uh, we're kind of at the end of this little project here. Actually, let's pull this out here. There we go. And we'll just peel all this tape off. And this is what I was talking about with that painter's tape. It just peels off real easy when you don't get it wet. We saw with that last uh, air layer video I did, I got it wet and it didn't peel off so easy. But there's our little cutting. So you can see we've got new leaves starting to grow up right here. And you can see that purple kind of color in there. It's actually really pretty. It's almost like a fall color. I'm not sure why it did that because these have been under 16 hours a day. I'm pretty sure I did 16 hours a day of lighting and it's just an LED bulb, but it's a, it's a vegetative bulb. Anyway, you can notice that there, you can't see any roots down in that cup at all. There are no roots that I can see on the bottom, on the sides, anywhere. But if we get this one, let's take a look at this. We'll pull this out here. I have not done this yet. These have been sitting in these little cups all this time, and that's what's making this so fun. No intervention. Take a look at this. First of all, this one actually has one big, massive root right here. And you guys getting that okay? Yeah one big massive root right here and it started out at the top of the cutting coming out above the soil level and is growing down into there pretty good i just noticed some other roots up here this is the one that was sitting in that windowsill so kind of an interesting difference between these two we've got nice roots on this one that sat in the windowsill the leaves are still very green. We've got new growth, just wanting to uh, start coming up right here at this little bud. And in fact, I'm gonna show you guys something that was really cool. I noticed it down in the cup. Hopefully this will show you here. 
But uh, if you look real close, you can see at the top of that stem, we've got callus buildup. And that's due to all the humidity that was in there. And you can see the same thing right down in there. You can see that root coming up from above the soil level because of all the moisture inside that little dome, that cup. So it worked. I mean, it absolutely worked. You guys are always asking me, can I take a cutting, put it in a cup, put it in my windowsill and just let it do its thing? Absolutely. We just did it. So awesome. Now, the question is, where do we go from here? Well, I actually was pretty surprised by the results here. I thought for sure I'd see something like what this did with this color, you know, turning fall colors and leaves falling off. I thought I'd see that with the one in the windowsill because the hours of light are getting less and less as we head into fall and then winter. But I was wrong. This stayed green. It stayed healthy. I've, in fact, even got a new little bud starting to come up right here at the base. I've got lots of roots. So the windowsill one actually did better. And just so you're aware, it's almost impossible to find a windowsill unless you're on the north side of a building in the northern hemisphere, southern side of a building in the southern hemisphere. But uh, it's almost impossible to find a window where you're not going to get a little bit of direct sun coming through. This sat in a window where the sun actually did come through and hit this cup for maybe an hour, hour and a half of the day in the late evening. So it wasn't harsh sun. Just so you guys are aware of that, it actually worked out with some sun hitting it way later in the day, in the evening. And so it didn't heat up. I kind of felt it a few times, touched the cup. It never really was enough to heat up, but it did have a little bit of sun way later in the day. What do you guys want to do with these now? I'm thinking about just pulling this up and seeing if it actually has roots. And then maybe just putting this back in the windowsill. All right, let's just do this. I can't help it. I'm going to keep this one intact because it's got those nice roots down in there. But this one, I'm just going to pull it out. And let's see what we've got because I just... I can't help it. I want to see if we got roots on it. I'm really curious. Uh, I don't know what we're going to find. And we've got them. Do we need to go any further? We've got roots down in there. Well, let's just do it. What the heck? Let's just do it. You guys want to see it. I mean, there it is. How about, let, maybe we should just, no, I don't want to destroy this little cutting. Should we rinse it off and check out all the roots just for scientific purposes here, for educational purposes? And there it is. There's the little hydrangea with the roots. It did get tons of little roots down in there. Isn't that beautiful? Let's get that closer. I know you guys want to see a close-up of that beautiful roots absolutely gorgeous we haven't done this in a while have we beautiful little plant now i've got to do something with this i'm gonna have to figure this out should we repot it back up and just put it right back in the same conditions i've definitely stunted it i've definitely set it back but you can see this whole plan worked and you can see it worked in the windowsill too if you don't have the proper lighting we got lots of roots down in there. Got roots coming around this side. Healthy little plant. So there they are, we did it. We got two beautiful little hydrangeas. I know some of you are cringing right now, but we haven't done that in a while. I mean, this is like what we used to do, guys. We used to pull them out and look at the roots and I just couldn't help myself. You gotta see them again. I can get lots more cuttings where this came from, but maybe we can get it to survive. Maybe we can pot it back up and put it inside and see if it'll just take off again. This one, I'm definitely not going to take out. We're going to let it go and see what happens. So I'm not sure quite yet what I'm going to do. I'll let you guys know. I'll definitely do an update with these, but I'm going to put this one back in the house. I haven't decided whether it's going to go into the light or in the windowsill again, if I'm going to take the cup off or not. I haven't decided that yet, but, uh, I will definitely come back, do an update on these, and let you guys know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something from it like I did. I learned a lot. I was kind of proven wrong a little bit by some of this stuff here. But uh, if you did enjoy it and you did learn something, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see where these guys turn out. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.